Ghost member video and was originally recorded during the Force for Good class series in January 2016 with Sharon Salzberg and friends. So a little later tonight, we'll, we'll do some loving-kindness meditation, which is its own sort of stream of, of practice, its own methodology. So as you know, no doubt, these Wednesday evenings, 17 of them, I believe, are dedicated to uh, Dan Goldman's book, A Force for Good, uh, which he wrote for for the Dalai Lama. It's the Dalai Lama's vision of good in the world, um, taking these values and bringing them into action, values of loving kindness and compassion and uh, a kind of inclusivity, a sense of equality, things like that. And, and uh, what does that look like in a day, you know, in real time? It, in some ways, it's an extension of what seemed to be really moving the Dalai Lama um, many years ago at the um, turn of the millennium when he had a book that came out called Secular Ethics, saying that if what the world really needs is good-heartedness more than anything, so that we rest upon a very powerful truth, which is that our lives are intertwined. We are counting on one another. We're interdependent. We have a moral obligation to help take care of one another. So if that's true, what if you don't happen to have any kind of religious belief? And your inspiration is not coming from a systematized religion or a dogma or a belief system. Well, that's a lot of people, right? And uh, it doesn't need to be coming from a religious belief. That conviction, that understanding, that commitment can be coming from, he would feel, science. And a really clear-eyed understanding of this is reality. This is how things are. So how are we going to respond to that truth? And a commitment to caring that isn't born out of conventional religion, and hence secular ethics. Um, and that seems to still be a, a very big ongoing theme. So when we talk about loving kindness, or we talk about qualities like compassion, for some people, of course, uh, the religion of their childhood was the inspiration or a personal conviction within that kind of context. For an awful lot of people, it's not. And so I would say for myself, uh, I went to India when I was 18 to study meditation and all of my practice in the 45 years since then. Um, those of you who've been sitting here with me Tuesday nights know that January is my anniversary month. Uh, and it's been 45 years since I started practicing, shockingly. Uh, how many two-year-olds really meditate, you know? But um, it's always been within the context of a Buddhist tradition, and so that's the kind of languaging or um, approach that I'm most familiar with. But there's nothing about that that is about becoming a Buddhist. As uh, the Buddha himself is so famous for having said, he said, don't believe anything. Don't believe anything because I said it. Don't believe anything because a great elder has said it. 
don't believe anything because you've read it in a sacred text. He said, put it into practice. See for yourself what's true. To learn about the Tibet House member archives and upcoming Tibet House member trips with geographic expeditions, please visit tibethouse.us. Tashi Delek, and thanks for watching.